Welcome to Behind the Audition podcast with your host, Kurt Hilton. Listen in on interviews with voiceovers, filmmakers, producers, animators, and much more. Kurt, a voice actor himself, will give insider tips to the business, talk with guests about how they got into the business, and be sure to stay tuned to the end of the podcast when he challenges his guests with a pop-up audition. Now it's time for Behind the Audition podcast. Here's Kurt Hilton. Welcome to Behind the Audition podcast. I'm so glad you're listening in, and I know what you're thinking. Another podcast, Kurt, what are you going to give us that you know, a lot of voice actors or filmmakers have done on podcasts that is going to be different? Well, it may it may not be different, but guess what? I'm going to try it, and I'm going to try to bring something fun and new to you. So what's the show about? Well, I'll be interviewing voice actors, filmmakers, producers, casting directors, and more. And my goal is to ask them questions how they got into the entertainment business. Did they have any auditions that they bombed? What did they do differently? To help get them that audition, even if they're the animator, what did they bring to the table to help get them that gig? And my first guest, I guarantee you've heard his voice. He's been in movies such as Star Wars, Return of the Jedi, Star Wars, The Force Awakens, Gremlins 1, Gremlins 2, and many, many more. So, without further ado, here's my interview with Mark Dotson. <laughs> and welcome to the show, the one and only Mark Dotson. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing Wonderful. good. Wonderful. All things considered, I'm doing good. Absolutely. You can't just you can't just act like nothing's going on. I know exactly. And we, we, right? we did talk so, before we it record, so it's like I'm you know not going to be fake about this whole thing. So <laughs> no, so uh, so like you, you have your child there trying to get online while you're needing to work. I have my granddaughter here because we're having problems with the internet at my daughter's house, so they're over here this morning. <laughs> Uh, it's fight, and, fight over uh, the Wi-Fi. <laughs> and we're all living different lives. Although, as a voice actor nowadays, my life didn't change that much as far as working out of the home. Because that's mostly what we do anymore. Sometimes they want to bring you into a studio. But but now we're just doing it out of our homes. Completely. I know. So. And, and it is exciting. And, you know, before we, before we start, I'm going to talk about our relationship. We're actually cousins. And this is so cool that I get to interview because the first interview I heard, I was a kid at, at actually your aunt's house, my, my grandmother, and I heard you on Camo X, which is one of the biggest St. Louis radio stations out there. And she said, I didn't know that. Yeah, know that. you're going to love this. She goes, Shh, your cousin's on the radio. I'm like, my cousin. She goes, yeah, he, he, he was in Star Wars. I'm like. Who? And she goes, the little rat guy by Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> I, I, I'm a little rat guy. Yeah. And I, and she goes, he's the gremlin. So growing up, I would point to the TV and there would be a gremlin or salacious crumb. And I would tell my friends, that's my cousin. And now I want now I know why they thought I was crazy, because. Right. And I, I will never forget that. She shushed me at the at the <laughs> dining room table because you're on KMOX. And I'll never forget that. And here I am. I'm not going to say our age this many years later. And I guess that's really I, cool. Yeah, you can say so, right. Just, but that's really I didn't know you. And I know I was being interviewed by Harry Ham. Yeah, who was in St. Louis. He's the big, you know, movie guy, movie buff that did every week. I don't know if he still does, but he did um, uh, reviews, movie reviews for the movies that were coming out on Camo X, the voice of St. Louis, like huge station. Anybody in the Midwest that listened to the Cardinals got them through Camo X. Big signal. And yeah, and it was for the opening of Gremlins 2. Gremlins, yeah. yeah which, and I was, and it was in 1990. And I was yeah. brought, yeah, and they asked me to, they knew I lived in town again. I had moved back for a while. Yeah. And they it wanted me to uh, come in and talk about, you know, working on Gremlins 2. I will never forget that, that little radio transistor on top of the fridge. And she was so in tune to hearing you. And then I got into it because, you know, I heard Star Wars and Gremlins. I'm like, Oh my gosh, my cousin's a gremlin and salacious crumb. I don't hear what he has to say, but it was so cool. And here, and here we are now. So, right. and I mean, you've you've done a lot for me. You, you know, I consider you my inspiration to get into this business, and uh, you know, you like a mentor to me. And I just want to say thank you before we get the show started. Well, thank you. That's really really nice. Although, Absolutely. like I said, don't don't blame me. This is <laughs> this isn't an easy business, man. You you're no. finding out. No, you can't have sensitive skin. I I found that out real quick. 
So. <laughs> well, I think I sent you to somebody that I knew would let you know that real quick. But you know what? That makes you stronger. And yeah. if, if you do have sensitive skin, do not get in this business. So no, no. So I guess, you know, talk about, you know, talking about St. Louis, your, your move to California. Who was your inspiration to, to for you to want to be a voice actor? Um, well, I mean, I, of course, I, I grew up. I loved, uh, uh, you know, all the Warner Brothers cartoons as a kid. I was born in 60. So I really grew up on the Warner Brothers stuff. So Mel Blanc, I loved, and I would try to impersonate those characters. But it was when I was 10 years old, uh, my uncle, Ed, took me to Disneyland. My sister and I went to visit. He lived in San Diego, still lives in San Diego. And we went to Disneyland. And uh, we went through um, the Haunted Mansion. And when I heard Paul Freeze, who is the ghost host, Welcome, foolish mortals, to the haunted mansion. And I was like, oh, my God. Even as a little kid, I was like, that's the greatest voice I ever heard. And um, when we were leaving, I asked one of the kids that were working there if they knew who the voice was in the, ha- in the haunted mansion. And they said, yeah, that's Paul Freeze. And. I said, oh, I love his voice. They said, well, he's Boris Badenoff and Bullwinkle, and he's the Pillsbury Doughboy, and he's just done a lot of all the fractured fairy tales. And um, and I remember telling my uncle, I want to do voices like that someday. And that really that really was completely. Uh, Paul Freeze was still inspires me. I still listen to Paul once in a while. You know, like, I, I, you I, I love chills. his voice. <laughs> You yeah. gave me chills because you sound exactly like him. We just went to Disney World in October before the whole pandemic stuff started. And I, I took my kids on that ride. And I said, listen to this voice. And you, you it is there's nothing like his voice when you no. get on a ride. It's so yeah. eclectic. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul Freeze, still the greatest. Absolutely. And I love hearing his outtakes, like with the mess ups, you know, and hear him yes. on YouTube. That's so funny. I've gone there and I've certainly listened to those many times now. And yeah, the, anybody listening that wants to hear it, go to YouTube, look up Paul Freeze outtakes, uh, Haunted Mansion session, put it in however you want. And now it didn't used to be there, but in the last few years, they put up like, ah, oh, there's about a half hour of session time from the Haunted Mansion session. It's awesome. I love it. And so when you moved to California, what was your first job before you got a voice acting gig? Well, so I didn't I didn't really think I could be a voice actor because all through school, um, I, you know, I always took public speaking and I, I really thought I would end up being a director producer, partly because I would get too nervous every time I would have to give a speech in class. And then I took drama and I was always like, give me the smallest part because I get too nervous when I'm on the stage. So I thought there's no way I could be an actor but I could direct and produce. And that's really what I thought I would do. So what was your question? <laughs> no, no, it's all right. So, so your first job, and most of you know, yeah. your, your, your big gig came when you tried out for ET. And, yeah, actually, and, that, that doesn't come out often. No. So I was working for Lucasfilm. So I ended up getting a job. I went to L.A. at 18, right out of high school, finished high school, went to, to L.A., um, and was willing to take any job. Back in those days, it was like, you know, you could get a job on a on a studio back lot, uh, literally uh, being a janitor, and you could still be able to hang around the sets when you were done work, and they'd let you come and sit, which they don't do anymore. But um, you could come and hang out, and I thought, all right, I'll take any job I can get at a studio, <laughs> and then in my off time, I'm going to be bugging them, you know, on the back lot. And uh, I ended up with Lucasfilm and but that was they were they they were moving people up to Marin County. And um, I said, well, I'll do anything. And they said, well, we're actually we're looking for laborers and carpenters right now to build Skywalker Ranch. And I said, I can labor. I can carry lumber. I can do that. I'll do it. They were like, really? I said, yeah. And then I'll be with you. And then. If something opens up in production, you'll bring me over someday. And they're like, well, man, all right, if you'll do that, okay. 
next thing I knew, I was I was a laborer up in Marin County. Um, the first building I was working on was what was called Sprockets, and that was in San Rafael on Kerner Boulevard, and it was it was called the Kerner Company. It was actually where ILM was, and they it, it said Kerner Company. You couldn't tell what it was. They didn't want people to know what it was, but it was Industrial Light and Magic. And right next door, they were building Soundstage. Uh, te- basically temporary while they would, would be, be building the ranch because Ben Burt, the sound man, he had a little studio in San Anselmo. So while I was building, <clears throat> while I was out there laboring on that building, um, somebody was walking through and I, I would always be joking around and I had, I was carrying some lumber and I was doing a Popeye. Kind of, <laughs> you know how, when he would walk and, yes. I, and then he would do the little do and I rip at these, you know, and, and this guy, this one guy, and the, so the the people would come through that were going to be working in that facility while we were building on the sound part of it, and um, they'd see how you know how we were progressing, and this one guy goes, hey, that's a that's a great Popeye. I said thanks, and he said, can you do any other impersonations? And I said, yeah, and he's like, do some, and I remember I did uh, Strother Martin. I for him. I said, <laughs> what we have here is a failure to communicate. Anyway, and he goes, well, that's a good Struther Martin. He's like, you know, uh, you know, Ben Burt. And I said, yeah, the, the head of sound here. And he says, yeah, Ben's always looking for voices. You need to let him know you can do voices. He'll probably have you in for an audition. So I was like, OK. And I let him know. It wasn't too much later that I get a call to come over and audition. And I went to San Anselmo to his studio there. And um, they didn't show me a picture. He didn't show me a picture or anything. He just described that I'm working on, he says, I'm working on this, this uh, alien and the alien, it's not man or woman. It's, and I'm, 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 I don't know exactly <laughs> what I'm needing, but I need a voice for this alien. So I'm going to just feed you some lines. Didn't even give me a script. Yeah, and I want you to say I'm back. So I did, you know, he gave me some lines. Well, I went home that night and my wife at the time said, what did he have you do? And I remember saying, I, I don't remember exactly because I was so nervous. Um, but I said, he had me saying some kid's name over and over and something about a phone. And I, I, OK, so so I didn't get the part. I didn't get the part. But I did get to go to the screening because ILM had done the special effects and and Ben uh, had done the sound for this movie E.T. And we go and um, we're watching and all of a sudden this little character comes on and says, Elliot. And I went, oh, my God, <laughs> that's the kid's name. I said to my wife, I go, that's the kid's name. When I was auditioning, she, oh, me, she goes, you would have been E.T. I was like, <laughs> oh, my God, I can't even believe this. And then oh. after the screening, yeah, we were, um, uh, you know, there was a little party, a little dinner thing. And uh, we went and Ben came up and, you know, he he said, how'd you like the movie? I said, I loved it. And I say, now I see what you went with. And he's like, yeah, that was I, I that lady was in buying cigarettes in San Anselmo. I happened to be in the store. I heard her voice. And I was like, there's my voice right there. That's pretty much her voice. She was oh a heavy gosh. smoker, very old woman, <laughs> and she just had that, you know, Elliot. That was, oh, you know, my goodness. I guess he had her do it very soft. And he's like, but you did a great job, and I will I be so, calling yeah. for more auditions. And I said, okay, great. So that's that was my first audition. And then, of course, he did call me to audition, and I ended up getting the part of Salacious Crumb. Once you again, know, due to my total uh, nerves. Yes, and, and that's what I was going to say. That that's, but you know what though? That created Salacious Crumb is probably the most memorable character on Return of the Jedi. I can, I mean, you could say any character on Return of the Jedi, and they're like, yeah, I don't know what it is. But you say the Rat Guy by Jabba the Hutt. Preachers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Preachers. And yeah. It, yeah. if you don't mind telling us the story about the how he was created with the Emerald Akbar, that that story is so cool because. I mean, you made a you made a creature come alive with that voice. I it was total. It was once again an act accident. A lot of people that work on Star Wars that, that I've met over the years are like, we all have these stories that are like, it was a total accident. 
it's like this is it's really strange. And I'm telling you, you talk to more Star Wars actors and you'll hear a lot of stories like this. So, Ben, <clears throat> excuse me, I am a smoker um, the, <laughs> and, I, and I don't suggest it because uh, there's kids listening. Uh, <laughs> but but keeping um, it real, Mark, we're keeping it real. It's yeah, okay. we're keeping it real. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Ben called me over. I went in uh, to now he's in the studio that I had helped to build. And first of all, I walked in. I was like, oh, this turned out beautiful. And he says, oh, that's right. You were the labor. You're a carpenter or a laborer. I said, I was the laborer. I carried all the lumber in here and all the dust out. And yeah. And of course, you know, we didn't. I, they moved me out to the ranch once we were done with our part, the framing and all that. And the finishers came in. I went out to the ranch and was made an apprentice carpenter. But so in the meantime, he calls me in and he's like, yeah, it came out great. We love the facilities. It's beautiful. We're so happy with it. OK, cool. So I walk into the studio that I helped build and um, he, get, he, he, he gives me a script. This time he gives me a script and he says, OK, we've got this character. His name's Admiral Akbar, And he kind of described him. And here's the lines. And it was the lines from the scene we're at where the hologram of the Death Star comes up in Return Ooh, yeah. of the Jedi. And Admiral Akbar is explaining how they're going to go in and, and blow up the get in to blow up the Death Star. It was very wordy. It was a lot of big words for, for, for me. <laughs> and I just got more nervous by the minute. And I was holding the script and I'll hold a script here that I happen to have on my on my uh, music stand. And I, I was holding the script and I started shaking and I was shaking so bad, I couldn't read the copy. I, I literally, that's how much I was shaking. And I told Ben, I'm like, I, I remember saying, oh, my God. And he looked, he goes, what? What's wrong? I said, I'm so nervous. And there was no place to set the, the script. I said, I'm so nervous. I can't, I can't read this. It, I'm shaking too bad. And he says, oh, it's okay. Just relax. Take your time. No big deal. No big deal to him. Right. But, you know, so I said, OK, well, can I just kind of shake off the nerves? And he said, yeah, do whatever you need. So I walked away from the mic and I'll do it here in my booth. I love it. And I started going. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then I walked back over and I went. Whew. All right. I quit shaking. I'm ready. Let's do this. And he comes out from behind. He had a, a podium that he was kind of behind with all his buttons and knobs. And he comes out behind. He goes, no, give me the script. <laughs> and I thought, oh, <laughs> well, I give him I give him the script and he's walking away. And I really thought, wow, I just offended Ben Burt. I'm like, right. that's going to be it. Right. And he turned around and looked at me. He said, you know what you just did over there? And I said, yeah, cackling, laughing and that. And he said, yeah. I got a creature that that's going to be perfect for. We're going to forget Admiral Akbar. We're going to do a bunch of that today. Oh, that's awesome. And I was like, wow. And that's how. So there I say again, it's like it was the nervousness of the acting thing that, that created Salacious Crumb. If I'd have hidden the, those nerves and tried to do a read and tried to do Admiral Akbar and tried to hide it, I don't think oh. I'd have gotten the part and I certainly wouldn't have gotten, I wouldn't have cackled and I wouldn't have gotten salacious crumb who then led to a lifetime of voice work because, because the guys that made salacious Tony McVeigh, Chris Wayless, they went over with Spielberg after Jedi mm -hmm. to work on gremlins with Joe Dante and Steven Spielberg. Yeah. And the whole thing was, Hey, the gremlins look a lot like salacious crumb maybe they should have that voice. And they were asked, do you know who did the voice of salacious crumb? And, and they told him, yeah, Mark Dodson. And, you know, and that's another story, but it was, you know, well, do you know how to get a hold of him? And he said, well, yeah, that he's working for George up at Skywalker ranch. He's a carpenter up there now. And they said, see if he wants to do the voices for these gremlins. Oh, that's, awesome. that's how that happened. And of course I said yes to that. So. You know, and, and speaking of Gremlins, would you consider Gremlins a Christmas movie? Oh, geez. Just asking. I mean, well, it's obviously a Christmas movie. Thank and, you. Thank and you. I know. I see the stuff online where, 
oh, it's not a Christmas movie because it could have taken place at another time of the year. <laughs> well, you know what? It didn't, though. It took place at Christmas, so it's a Christmas movie. It right. starts with a Christmas song. They're yes. buying a Christmas tree. The Mugwai is a Christmas present. Right. The dog gets hung up in Christmas lights. Yes. How many more Christmas things do I have to tell you? Mrs. Deagle <laughs> is carrying her <laughs> snowman's head that that dirty dog wrecked. Oh, right? Oh, man. You know, um, well, <laughs> it's a Christmas movie. And, and anybody what, that wants to argue, meet me out back. We'll, we'll, that's we'll, awesome. We'll figure. And, and it's so true because, you know, when, when you watch that movie, you don't really think about Christmas time. But you did such a good job with those voices. I mean, that those voices scared the heck out of me when I was a kid. And I will never forget, just like the the scene with the uh, the crane or the whatever it was and went through the house. And they yeah. got the older. Oh, 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 oh man, the, that, the bulldozer. Yes. Yeah. That and then yeah, the yeah, pods. Mr. Futterman, Mr. Futterman and the bulldozer. And I which, will say. Which we didn't kill him. And yes. I told people. And people were like, oh, that's so you know, I said, we didn't kill anybody. We didn't hurt. We're just trying to have a good time. We're right. just very misunderstood. You know, yes. you know, you saw us in the bar. You've seen your friends act that way in a bar. You know, yes. we're just having a good time. And so and people would say, yeah, but you killed that old that one guy with the bulldozer. You killed him. I said, no, we didn't. We did not kill him. And take it that Gremlins personal. 2 came out and. And proved that I was right because Mr. Futterman was in Gremlins too. So, no, nope, we never killed anybody. I will say I did take. I'm gonna. I'll say this, you know, in front of you and everybody listening. I took your Salacious Crumb and your Gremlins and Tales of the Crypt laugh because you. Know, I've sent you my auditions before, yeah. and I made my my creepy Joker laugh with that because of your Gremlins and your Salacious Crumb. And I, you know, somebody wants a creepy laugh. I use it every time. So growing up. I had to perfect that long, high pitched, crazy laugh. And it's right. harder than some people think to do. <laughs> well, to get so, up that high. Yeah. Yes. That's falsetto for us. Yes. And, you know, it's a compliment when they say, wow, I like that laugh. I'm like, well, it takes a long time and it's not that easy to do. But I, I guess as for auditions now, would you say it's a lot easier nowadays to get that audition from when you first started? Hmm. For me? Yeah. I mean, like, well, but yeah. is it? But for well, a, I guess for a, about a new person, let's start. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, obviously, oh, so. okay. For a new person, I'd say yeah. it's probably the same. Okay. Although, although for you new people, there's a lot more people doing this. You know, when yes. I started, real actors didn't would <laughs> never do a voice. You know, would yeah. never do a commercial. Would never. And then all of a sudden, they found out how less demanding it is than being an on set, being a live action actor. They found out you could show up in blue jeans and a t-shirt yeah. and, you didn't, and it didn't matter what you looked like and you didn't have to go through makeup and you went in and you did your lines and you made really more money as a voice actor in a six hour session than you would as an actor on a, on a 12 hour day, you know? So um, I totally agree with that because, you know, they I've found sent- that out and and then they found out how much they could make doing commercial work. And all of a sudden, all the big actors started wanting to do voice work. So now we compete with those guys, too. So. Yeah. So you got a lot more people that are into it. Um, and and you got and then you've got the the on camera guys that are wanting to do it, too. So there's a lot more competition for for any of us um, starting out. It's the same. I mean, you need to get a de- you need to do, do your demo. Um, demos are different than they used to be. We used to do one demo that would be like three minutes long and it would have commercial character narration, a little bit of everything. Now it's all, you know, a minute 10 of just characters, a minute 10 of commercial, a minute 10 of narration, a minute 10 of trailer, a minute 10 of of uh, promos. Um, so so now we do it that way. Um, so that's a little different. Um, uh, but then you still, you got to, then you got to get that demo to an agent or to mm-hmm. casting directors or, 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 and, or, and to producers and really a demo just shows them what you can do. It gets you the audition. You know, they hear you and they go, Oh yeah, I like his style. I like this. 
yeah, let's let's go ahead and give him an audition. And of uh, those that that 60 seconds, how many seconds do you think they really listen to? It, uh, they listen. They know if they like you in the first 10 and, and if and they I, like you, they keep listening. And if they don't, they shut it off. And then, they, you know, we used to send cassettes and then they would set it on their desk and they'd use that to record their music on later. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the advice you'd give me was, you know, because you're honest. And that's what I love about I'd, I'd send something to you. You'd say, nope, better acting. And I hear that a lot. And I think that's what everybody who wants to get into this role of voice acting Learn how to act because anybody can read, but you have to know how to act. It's Don't act. you agree? Yeah, it's acting. Because yeah. there's people who have amazing voices that I see on uh, YouTube and you know social media, and they're being you know they're thinking they're this big voice actor, and they really can't act. But I I, I don't say anything like you'll see a lot of people. Everybody's a a critic on social media nowadays. You know they're yeah. the you know yeah. I, I would I would agree with you saying get a coach. You know, learn how to act, yeah, learn your equipment. Yes. Uh-huh. Learn. And if, if you were to jump in a DeLorean tomorrow and go back to say to when you're 18 years old, what would you tell 18 year old Mark Dotson? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I'd say focus more on your work than the girls. <laughs> 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 oh, I mean, I'm being goodness. honest. It's okay. I can go back at 18, sidetracked uh, a lot. It's, and I, it's all right. And I, and I got out there a lot. So at 18, yeah, I could have, I could have, uh, but I still made it, right? I mean, that, you know, somehow. Um, that's not the, the answer you're looking for, but no, you know. it's good. No, that's perfect. I mean, if if, if you weren't, if you weren't to be a voice actor, where do you think, what, what do you think you'd be doing nowadays? I would be a, uh, I would be at this age now. I would hope that I would now be um, a, um, a mounted forest ranger in Yosemite. <laughs> yes, that's a perfect answer. I love it. That, um, yeah, I, I want. I, I knew then in high school. I was either going to go into entertainment and hope to direct and produce, or I was going to go be a forest ranger. And I rode horses, and I was like, and I want to be a mounted horseback uh, forest ranger. And I looked into it, and I knew that pretty play that like, well, if you want to be in Yosemite, you got to be really good, and you put your name in, and maybe in 20 years they'll move you to Yosemite, you know? Yeah. Or, or Yellowstone, or whatever huge park you wanted to to end up in you but yeah i would I would, I would be, uh, <laughs> and, and you know some of those harder years i was like man i should have been a i should have been a forest ranger <laughs> could you imagine with your voice though mark like at the park <laughs> excuse me mr ranger well yes son with that voice <laughs> <laughs> right, right they would just sit there and look at you all day like wow what an amazing voice you know <laughs> so and they'd probably say like most people wow you have a good voice you should be a voice actor <laughs> that's I what everybody know, says maybe I'd have probably uh, gone up and said, you know, Mr. Ranger's not going to like that, <laughs> you know, or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, so a couple more questions. Tell me about an audition that you bombed. Is there an audition that you bombed that you remember? Um, well, there's been a lot. that well, There's been a lot of auditions where I didn't get the part. Um, now you want me to give you a list of all the things I didn't get? But I've always said the list of what I didn't haven't gotten is a lot more impressive than what I got. Okay, that's a fair, that's a good answer. Okay, well, I mean, I was, I, you know, um, I was thinking of it the other day uh, because uh, who does Optimus Prime for the film? Peter, Peter Cullen. Oh, I love that guy's voice. Peter Cullen. Yeah. Okay, so the one audition that I'll tell you that hurt the most that I didn't get was I loved Winnie the Pooh. I grew up okay. with Winnie the Pooh. And um, I loved Eeyore. Oh, okay. Wow. You know, yeah, oh, father. But uh, I and I got an audition for Eeyore when the original Eeyore passed away, and I really wanted that part because I loved Eeyore. That was why I loved Eeyore. I wanted to be Eeyore. Yeah, and um, and I did a great audition, and it was one of the few times I called my agent to say, "Hey, have you heard?" Because you just you don't you don't do that. You don't call your agent and say, did I get the part? If you got the part, they let you know. But I was I had waited a couple of weeks and I was like, maybe they haven't decided yet. I'm just going to hope they haven't decided. And I called my agent and said, you know, hey, Andrea, sorry. But um, which was she was it was Andrea Romano at the time who went on to be a 
huge director of animation, uh, Emmy, huge director. Look her up, Andrea Romano. Okay. okay. Um, but, um, and I called her and she said, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, Peter Cullen got the part. And Peter was great. He's incredible. He's older than me. He'd been around longer. He got the part. I went, oh, okay. All right. Okay, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> I hung up the phone. About a half hour later, I called her back. And I said, hey, Andrea, you know what? Because I'm going to say it. I said, you know what? I should have gotten that part. I My Eeyore was dead on, and you know it. She's like, <laughs> oh, no, you were, Mark. You could have gotten it just as easy as Peter. Either way, it was between you two, as a matter. I said, well, you know what? I should have gotten it. You know what? I have f***ing had it with this <laughs> I'm See, you know, done. I love that. I love that. That's what I everybody said, needs I'm, to hear. I'm done. I f***ing had it. I can't do this anymore. I, I you know, I, I go up for parts. I don't get stuff. And now this one, I'm, I'm done. He's yes. like, okay, all right. I said, I'll talk to you later. I hung up. <laughs> the next day, the next day I called her. Hey, Andrea. She's like, yeah. I said, okay, I'm ready to, <laughs> if you got any auditions or anything, I'm ready to go back at it. She's like, I knew you'd be calling. I know oh how much you wanted that part. And I, t- I said, I'm sorry. I talked to you that way. I'm sorry. It's like, no, it's okay. It's okay. I understand. You really wanted that part. And, and I, I understand. And it's okay. And oh my I'm gosh. glad you're back. So, but you, I so said, there you go. That was, and, and, uh, and I love Peter Cullen and he's a great Eeyore. And I ended up becoming friends with Jim Cummings, who is now Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. And we've, we've had this discussion. Yeah. We see each other at Comic-Con. He's a wonderful man. Really, really nice guy. And I, I just saw him in February before they locked us all down. We were at a show in Pensacola, Florida, Pensacon. And I told him I had seen the Winnie the Pooh movie. And as far as, uh, as he go, I, I told him, I said, you know, I want to tell you, I, I have a great ear because people need to know if you want to be a voice actor, you've got to have as good an ear as a voice. Mm-hmm. And I, I said, you know, Jim, I have a great ear. And I said, I saw the movie. And I want to tell you, I could have, sh- if you played your, your uh, Winnie the Pooh next to the original, Sterling Holloway, I would not be able to tell the difference. I would no way be able to. And your Tigger, if, if they played me you and then played Paul Winchell, I would no way be able to tell which is you and which is Paul. And I said, and I just want you to know you, I have decided after that, you are the greatest of us all. Wow. And That's he was compliment. like, whoa, he, he was, he was like, oh my God, thank you so much. That's the nicest thing you could say. And I was like, well, I'm not just saying it'd be nice because yeah. I'm not nice. <laughs> you are the best. You are amazing. And he was like, thanks brother. You know, and we hugged. Oh, that's but, cool. Um, but yeah, so, um, you know, and um, yeah, I mean, it's there's some great voice actors out there. I would have totally after I would hung up, I would have called back. But like, I was just kidding. That was my acting that I did for you. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. We were in person. We were at the show. Together. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I, no, I'm, no, I'm saying the act when you hung up. Oh, uh, that, that, and scene. You'd be like, what's that? Yeah, I, I messed that up. <laughs> okay. But. So one 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 thing I'm going to do that I'm going to do on this uh, podcast, it's called the uh, audition challenge. And basically, I'm going to give you three things to choose from. It's a Saturday morning cartoon character, a reality TV star or your favorite VO impression. I'm going to give you the line and I want you to read it back as one of those three that I gave you. And uh, okay. um, the line the line is going to be uh, run. The zombies are coming and they want your last roll of toilet paper. So. Run! The zombies are coming and they want your toilet paper. <laughs> yes, that that's or, great. Or you know you can or you can do the run. The zombies are coming and they want your toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> I would have gone with run. The zombies are coming and, and they want your last run of toilet paper. <laughs> kind of sounds like the guy from Step Brothers, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, you trust my drum set? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh uh, gosh, Mark, thank you so much. I mean, you really—I mean, you helped me make my dream come true by having you as my first guest. And uh, one last thing: what, what's what's going on, you know, during the pandem- pandemic for you, and you know, what's next big for you? 
Oh, I just did a, I just did a, um, a grindhouse style movie trailer that I can, that's all I can, I can't give names and things. Okay. Um, no problem. I'm working on Star Trek online. I do a lot of Star Trek online. Um, some other things that are coming out that I still can't talk about. Ah, I'm, I'm wanting to, um, there's some, uh, there's an, there's actually, um, a Star Wars thing coming out in October that I'm a part of. Awesome. And yeah. if somebody want, if somebody wants to hire Mark Dotson to be their voiceover, where could they go to get this done? Well, they could. You know what? You can if you if you want to hire me or if you just have questions. I don't mind if people send me an email. Um, it's Mark at MarkDodson.com. Um, there's that. And then I have an a my agent in in L.A. is Special Artist Agency. You can get me through there. Uh, that's, uh, joy. Um, she's the, in the voice, she's the head of the voice department at special artists. That would be the best probably. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, and you can check me out. You can check out my site. You just click on whatever picture it, everything on there that you has, has sound to it. You click on it and that's markdodson.com. So I'm going to ask you a question. You're the first guest and you give it to me real. How would you rate the show so far? Oh, it was very comfortable. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really nice. Wonderful. Right. The questions were really nice. Um, you let me talk. <laughs> <laughs> my you favorite rule. thing, my favorite thing about Johnny Carson was he let the, the, the people that came on be the guest and be the, he was, he was their straight man. You know, of all, I still, to this day, Carson was the best because he was the greatest straight man. You know, as much as I like Leno and those guys, they overwhelm me sometimes. It's like, let the guest be funny. Let the guest talk, you know? Right. I have a, and I have a hard time doing that. Like, you, can, you probably heard me cutting in a couple of times. I'm learning how to keep my mouth shut because I like to talk and I got to learn to stop doing that. Right. Right. So, Mark, thank you so much for being on the podcast. You rock. I appreciate everything that all the feedback you've given me through the years, your honesty. And once again, just thank you for everything, Mark. I appreciate it. Man, thank you very much, Kurt. I appreciate it. No problem. Mark Dotson, everybody. Thanks for listening in on Behind the Audition podcast, made possible by Hilton Productions. If you need a male or female voiceover, contact us at HiltonProductions.com. Hilton Productions, let our voices do the selling.